Well, good morning, Renewal family, and welcome to you. Thank you for jumping online with us. If you're new with us, my name is Derek Puckett. I'm the lead pastor here at Renewal Church of Chicago. If you would do a couple things for me, if you would click that new here button on whatever platform you're on, if there's no button, there should be a link. And we'd love for you to fill out the connect card so we can get in touch with you, get you plugged into our church so you can learn more about who we are as a church. Our vision here at Renewal Church of Chicago is to renew and to rebuild and release people through the work of Jesus Christ. We want to see the city of Chicago and the surroundings better because Renewal Church of Chicago is here. So I'm glad you jumped on with us. If you're back again, if you're a member, thanks for jumping online with us. I know this time is weird and unprecedented times where we're not able to be together, but we can be together online. So thank God for technology. Uh, if you have a child at home, like always, if you go to our website or click the kids tab up at the top on that online online platform, you can go onto that website and our kids department has laid out a whole different, a whole bunch of resources for you to have so they can have service while you're having service too in your home. So they're not bored and while you're doing church, they actually can learn too. So we haven't forgot about them. We want them to jump online with us too. Uh, with that, I also want to say at the end of service today, after the sermon, we will be taking communion. So if you would go ahead and get your communion elements and things together so you can do that with us and so we can commune and we can fellowship together, although it's online. Uh, before we get into worship and we go further in our service, I would love to pray with you. Uh, and if you would, just stand with me wherever you are and let's pray and let's welcome God into this time as we worship him together. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. You are a truly awesome God and we give you all glory, all praise and all honor, God. It is you who have uh, made us, who stitched every part of our, our body together, God. And we give you praise. So God, let our worship be a fragrant offering to you. May you be lifted up in our homes, in our lives, wherever we are, God. Get glory in this place. And we pray all these things in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And we all said together, amen and amen. Let's worship, family. Let's worship.
Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. So, Father, we just give you praise and we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for being an awesome God all by yourself. God, we thank you for just a space to lift our hands and to worship you. God, we give you glory. Continue to get glory in this service today. It's just good to worship. And have a God that we know we can worship pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and we all said together, amen, amen. Well, friends, if you have just jumped online with us, again, my name is Derek Puckett. I am the lead pastor here at Renewal Church of Chicago, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. I got a few announcements before we get into our word today, so uh, just bear with me as we walk through these announcements. Number one, if you have not joined us in a watch party, I'm going to tell you right now, you're missing out. We want you to jump in with us. It's just a joy, honestly, when people come in here, although we have masks on, which is required, to hear people sing the songs as we watch service together, to see people fellowshipping and talking together, and for me to be able to see your faces again, as as I haven't seen some of you all in months, it's just a breath of fresh air. And I do want to tell you that it is safe when you walk up in here. We got, we have, we we do temperature checks. We have 
hand sanitizer everywhere. It's cleaned before and after each service. There's masks that are required. And if you forget yours, we have a mask for you. So we want to make sure that we're safe and we're we're abiding by the law as you kind of come up in here. So that's up to 30 people. We need you to sign up right now if you have not come into a watch party at 9 and 11 a.m. at our renewal offices every Sunday morning. So sign up right now, okay? Just go sign up. Go sign up if you haven't done so already. Um, and with that, y'all, I need you to get excited a little bit more because coming up on November 1st, we are having our first in-person service in a long, 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 long time. And I, I couldn't be more excited about it. So I want you guys to sign up. We're only going to be able to have 50 uh, in each one of these services at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. So you need to sign up, sign your whole family up. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time where we're going to worship together. It's going to be live worship. I'm going to be preaching. So you'll hear the preached word. It won't be a screen. We're going to have a great time. But I don't want you to miss out on this because it's we're not going to necessarily do it the next week after November 8th. We're going to do it once a month starting November 1st. We want to ease our way into this and, and speaking of that, I know some of you guys may not be ready for this, so uh, we'll still be having watch parties and we'll still also be online. We want to make sure you're able to join us on any one of these platforms, whether that's online or in person at a watch service or at an in-person service on November 1st. All of these places, we have tried to make them as safe as we can. Uh, there will be masks that are required to be there. There will be hand sanitizer. Everything is clean before and after each service. We want to make sure that in this season, as God has not left us, that we don't leave God. Because sadly, statistics show that many people are not going to church anymore. They don't want to watch it online. So they're just they're just dropping out. They're not following after God. And, and we're missing moments that, that, that God can be doing some amazing things in our lives right now. And family, I don't want us to miss a moment. Amen. Amen. So let's chase after God together. You with me? Good, good. I need you to sign up now online or in person uh, on November 1st. We want to see you at 9 or 11 or in a watch party. Got a couple more announcements. Another one, if, you, if people have been asking about volunteering during this season, there's an array of different ways for you to volunteer at our church during this season. The church has not stopped. Obviously, you see us online right now. You see things on social media. You see things all over the place. We're out we're doing outreach all over the city. And so if you, if you have an outreach gift, you want to jump in, you want to serve the city, please, there's going to be a sign-up sheet at the bottom or on the link. You can click that link. We'd love for you to jump, on, jump in with us as we're the church, not just in the city, but we're for the welfare of the city. We want to see it better. So sign up with us to do that. If you have some technology skills or you're creative and you want to jump in and help us with filming or social media or graphics, Chris Day Brown would love to have you. So look, sign up online for that. If you want to sing and you have just some gifting or you can you can play an instrument, yo, Demond would love to have you too. I know they're great. They're both all of all of our groups and, and leaders here are amazing. But in this season, doesn't mean just because they're getting it done that they don't need help. We still need to be the church. So yes, I'm calling on you to volunteer with us. And if any if none of that is you and you you just want to set up and you want to help uh, clean up, then we need you too. Okay, we need you just like you need us. We need the church. Let's sign up and let's do this thing together. Hit the link there. If you can't find it there to be on our website too, you can sign up um, and be a part of what God is doing here at Renewal. One last announcement and we're going to get into the word today. November 6th and 7th. We did a marriage conference last year. We're doing one this year. So if you're a married couple out there, I, I need you to sign up. If you're pre-married, if you're engaged, I want you to sign up. Here's the reality. In this season, we need to champion marriages. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't champion singles and things like that. But I, I know that Satan's on the prowl. Uh, he wants to kill and he wants to destroy God's first covenant that he made between two humans. This, this covenant of marriage because it exemplifies Christ's love for the church. So many of us as married couples right now, we're struggling. We're struggling in this pandemic and we don't know what to do. Some of us, we work so hard and now we're sitting in the house together. We don't even know how to live together. We don't know how to do, we don't know how to do life. So I need you to sign up here, November 6th and 7th. 
the cost is $100 and that's for food and different things and, and different resources we're going to give you, speakers, things like that. Um, we're going to be in person, we're going to make this happen and we're going to be as safe as possible unless too many of us sign up and we'll be online. Uh, so I need you to sign up. I need to get a good count. And I want all our marrieds and, and engaged couples, I want y'all to jump into this. If money's an issue, which I know it can be in this season, do not let that stop you. I want you to sign up. I want you there so we can pour into you and your family in this season. Let's not miss what God's doing. Amen. So hit the link or sign up online on our website. I want you there November 6th and 7th. And with that, without further ado, y'all prepare your hearts for the word right now. I am. I'm excited to hear from Pastor Steve as he preaches to us today and we continue in our moments series. Here now, uh, the word preached. Hey, Renew. My name is Jay and I'm a member and chairperson here at Renew of Church. I pray you and your families are all doing well during this unprecedented time that we are in and trying to navigate. As many of you know, um, October is our Pastor Appreciation Month where we come together as a church body to celebrate our Pastor and First Lady. We can all agree that Pastor Derek and Kaylee have done a fantastic job in shepherding us during this difficult time. As a church, and because of the generosity of many of you, we have been able to care well for our members and the Chicago community through things like Chicago Delivers and Renewal Cares. On behalf of the church and the management team, I just wanna say thank you. I thank you so, so much for your gifts and your talents that God is using, especially in this season, to bless others. Now for Pastor Appreciation, I want to invite our church to participate in a special gift for Pastor Derek Cayley and their family. You know, just thinking about this, you know, we, we really want to take care of our pastor and his family well, as they never cease in caring for us. So if you would like to join in saying thank you, you can contribute um, with us towards a special love offering that will be a token of our appreciation to Pastor Derek and Kaylee. If you plan on giving, please do so soon. Um, we actually as a church will gift Pastor Derek and Kaylee this special love offering uh, during the month of October. So please, if you do plan, get it in as soon as possible. And you can give through uh, the various meetings that we have in the church just follow the instructions to give towards this special designation. And again, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for participating in our Pastor Appreciation Month. And of course, to Pastor Derek and Kaylee, thank you for your continued love and support for our Renewal Church family. God bless you all. Take care. Thanks, Pastor Derek. At this time, we want you to go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. And uh, so if you're new to the scriptures, just go on and Google that into your uh, Google search. And then if you're familiar with the Bible, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 21. So very first book of the New Testament. And while you're turning there, I, I want us to uh, prepare our hearts for the offering. Uh, one of the things that I'm reminded of when it comes to giving and one of the things that we're going to talk about today, we talked about last week, is that uh, in order to make sure that the things that we have, the things that God has given us, don't have our hearts and that God has our hearts is by giving. Uh, in order to accomplish the things that we are accomplishing throughout the city of Chicago and abroad, it's through your giving and your generosity that we're able to uh, care for those who need groceries, that we're able to come alongside churches in difficult uh, spaces and situations. And so I, I want to encourage you to participate in giving. There's multiple ways to be able to do that, and you can look at the screen to be able to tell uh, which way is the best for you. 
And I, I know that Pastor Derek says that the Old Testament says to give a tenth of your salary. Um, and it moves on to the New Testament and says to be a cheerful giver, or to be a hilarious giver, to give to the point of where it begins to make you laugh because it's kind of crazy, right? Um, and so we do this as a way to say to God, God, you have my heart. The things that you've entrusted me with don't. And I want to invest into your kingdom, be generous to your kingdom, because it's through your generosity that we've been made right with you. And so with that said, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for these gifts that we are about to receive. Even uh, for those of us who practice this online and we don't see it come out of our account every time that it does. God, we are reminding our souls right now that you are the treasure of our heart. You are our greatest treasure. And we invest into your kingdom as a response to your generosity towards us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Well, for those of you who have turned to Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, won't you do me a favor and go ahead and shout, I got it. We're continuing our series that we've entitled Moments, uh, and we're talking about intimacy with God. We're talking about being present to God in the moment and present to people in the moment. And so when you've got Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, shout, I got it. Words read this way. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The very words of Scripture. Amen. If you follow the life in ministry of Jesus, one of the things that you'll quickly notice is that Jesus is never in a hurry. Uh, he's, he's never in He's never in a rush. He, he hears the news that his friend Lazarus uh, is sick and he uh, he hears that news and uh, and they're asking for him to come to Lazarus. Lazarus eventually dies. And the Bible says that when he found the news out that Lazarus was sick, Jesus stayed where he was for two days. There, there was a, a woman who, uh, who had an issue of, of blood, and a man named Jairus was calling for Jesus to come heal his daughter. And on his way to uh, go to heal Jairus' daughter, this woman with the issue of blood, as crowds of people were surrounding Jesus, rushes over to Jesus and touches the hem of his garment. And he says, wait a second, who touched me? He stops as his disciples are like, how, how are you going to stop and, and ask the question, who touched you? We're in a crowd of people. And, and he says, no, somebody touched me. And, and quickly the woman found Jesus and said, it was me. And you have to imagine Jairus' emotions in that moment. This is urgent. We need to hurry to get to my daughter. And yet Jesus stops to be present to this woman with the issue of blood. When Jesus goes through Samaria and uh, he stops at what the Bible calls Jacob's, uh, Jacob's well, and he stops there and he speaks to a Samaritan woman and, 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 and he has this conversation with her, tells her everything that she ever did. She goes back into the town and the people are so elated with the message of Jesus that uh, they ask him to stay two more days. When the disciples came back to see him talking to the woman, he, they thought that he shouldn't even be talking to this lady. And yet on his way back, he stayed with them two more days. Jesus was never in a hurry. And in turn, he was always able to be present to God and present to people. Throughout the, the, the gospel accounts, there's this common refrain where there, there is a, uh, a invitation given. Come to me, Jesus said. Follow me, Jesus said. Learn from me. 
Last week, Pastor Derek talked about Matthew 11, and uh, we saw that, that same common refrain, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And Pastor D taught us about the yoke of Jesus, and he talked about uh, that, that they talked about in that passage. And, and the yoke uh, is this device used in an agrarian society that would have been used to connect two oxen together in order to pull a plow. But Jesus, you see, he, he's a teacher. He's not a farmer. So, so when he calls us to take his yoke up and learn from him, he's saying, learn to live life as my apprentice. And how did Jesus live his life? Being present to God in the moment and being present to people in the moment. Jesus regularly spent his, his morning getting up uh, first thing in the morning to get away to be with the Father. He, he regularly spent his evenings going away to spend the evening to be with the Father. He regularly pressed pause on accomplishing things, stepped away for weeks at a time in order to spend time with the Father. And when he came back, he came back present to all of the people he came in contact with. So the question on the table, I think, is that could it be that, that what Jesus meant by life and life to the full, what he said in John 10 and 10, the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life to the full or life more abundantly. Could it be that being present to God in the moment and present to people in the moment, could it be that slowing down of his life to do two things are the, the those two things are the reason he says his yoke is is easy and his burden is light. To slow down and be present to people and be present to the Father. I want to suggest to you this morning that this is the way of life and life to the full being fully present to God in every moment of our lives and present to people in every moment of our lives. So why is that not our experience? Why don't we find ourselves saying, I'm, I'm spiritually flourishing in this season? Why don't we say we're regularly experiencing Jesus' yoke being easy and his burden being light? I think it's because God is not our greatest treasure. I think it's because God is not our greatest treasure. If there was a big idea or a thing this message was tailored to teach us, it would be this. We don't experience the good life because God is not our greatest treasure. We don't experience the good life because God is is not our greatest treasure. In order to kind of give ourselves a table of contents from where we're going this morning, I, I want to look at three different things. The first two are closely related, and the last one is the resolution. Uh, number one, we're going to look at the cultural lie. Number two, we're going to look at the problem. And number three, we're going to look at the solution. Uh, the cultural lie, the problem, the solution. I want to preach from the subject, disordered loves. Disordered loves. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your kindness towards us this morning. We thank you for the opportunity even to gather together virtually and to hear from your word. Now I pray, God, that in our time together that Jesus would be exalted, that your word would be explained. It's to that end, Father, that I am available to you. Stand in my body, think with my mind, teach with my tongue, all those things which we are to know, say, and do. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus' words here uh, are presented to us within the scope of Jesus' historic Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and, and he's speaking specifically to his followers or to his disciples. And what begins the Sermon on the Mount is what's known as the Beatitudes. And, and these uh, Beatitudes are statements, not 
of doing, but of being. They are characteristics of people who are a part of the kingdom of God. They aren't things that you do in order to enter into the kingdom. They are characteristics of people who are a part of the kingdom. This is the context of Matthew chapter 6. So when Jesus turns to talking about treasure in our passage, when he says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, he, he really is beginning to focus as he's articulated these characteristics of people are a part of the kingdom of God. He begins to focus his attention on spirit, spiritual practices of people who are a part of the kingdom of God. In other words, this is how you live this out. And Jesus makes the distinction that the thing or things you treasure are interconnected. They're interconnected to your soul, to the entirety of who you are. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And here's the cultural lie of, of our time. The issue that you and I run up against in, in our world is that our world pushes us to pick up the pace of our lives so that we feel like we don't have time to slow down and take in all that is our greatest treasure. So we rush to get out of the house. We rush to get to work. We rush to get a workout in. We rush to grab some food. We rush to our job. We're so addicted to our phone that whenever we have a free moment, we rush to Instagram and social media to get a dopamine hit from the likes of the post that we posted hours earlier. We podcast on our commute home, the murder mystery, and we listen to Spotify the moment we have free time. We get home where we rush to see what's new on Netflix as we scroll through our phone to see what Facebook algorithm tells us the next thing we really need to buy is. We, we click on the new iPhone 12 unveiling promotion where it tells us everything is faster and faster and faster and faster. And we begin to think to ourselves, yeah, Everything needs to go faster. And for that moment, before we go to bed, our minds swirling with so many voices, we're scared to even sit with ourselves in silence only to get up and do it all over again tomorrow. As writer Ronald Rawlheiser says, we are distracting ourselves into spiritual oblivion. That is, that is the cultural lie, that, that we are distracting ourselves in the rush of life. We are distracting ourselves from spiritual oblivion, into spiritual oblivion. And a shift begins to happen as we are so distracted. A shift begins to happen in us, and before we know it, God is not our greatest treasure, something else is. Because we never slow down to foster a relationship, to cultivate a connection with the Father. He ceases to be uh, an end in himself, but he then becomes an end to our means. Let me say that again. Because we are so distracted and have uh, kept ourselves from uh, slowing down and fostering a relationship with the Father, he ceases to be the end in himself, but he becomes a means to our end. Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, uh, the great apostle Paul is articulating um, some really incredible things as he speaks specifically to the uh, Gentile or non-Jewish followers of Jesus who are in the church at Rome. Uh, and he would turn in chapter two and then speak specifically to the Jewish uh, followers of Jesus who are in the church at Rome. But he specifically in 121 through 23 speaks to the non-Jews. And, and he says in, in chapter 121, he says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. Now, hang in there with me. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being 
and birds and animals and reptiles. And, and some of us may hear that passage in Romans chapter 1, verse 21 through 23, and we say to ourselves, man, that's crazy. That is bonkers. These folks are wilding. They don't know what's reality. And yet what I want to suggest to you is what we see in Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, is the fundamental human error, regardless of what generation or regardless of what century you have been placed in. It is the foundational human condition. And that foundational human condition is that you and I build our lives on things other than God. We build our lives on things that are created by God. And it doesn't matter if you don't consider yourself religious at all today. It doesn't matter if you are an irreligious person. We can all say with some uh, sort of specificity that there are things you and I trust in to bring us lasting satisfaction, comfort, joy, and peace. And the things that we trust in to bring us that lasting satisfaction, those are things that have our attention. They have our focus. As author and lifelong spiritual seeker says, attention is the beginning of devotion doesn't matter if you say, I've been a follower of Jesus for a number of years, or I'm watching to this just because I'm bored today. I don't even go to church. We all have the proclivity to worship. We all have the inclination to build our lives on things other than God. And that is the foundational. I want to submit to you that that is the foundational human error. And Paul in Romans chapter one is saying that 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 human problem is that we worship the wrong things. We love created things more than the creator, as Rankin Wilburn, the the great spiritual author, uh, says in in articulating a definition of sin. He, he, He defines it multiple ways, but but this one very specifically cuts across the grain of our circumstance. He says sin is loving the wrong things. Or to be more precise, loving the right things in the wrong way. Sin is loving the wrong things, or to be more precise, loving the right things, loving good things in the wrong way. So in the midst of of our hurry and our distraction, God is no longer, or he, he no longer becomes the end goal uh, in, in, in a life that values speed in, and achievement. Our goals become our God. Good things. Beneficial things. Become the things that we build our lives upon, our Our goals have the tendency, because of the human condition of worshiping and serving created things, our goals, in the midst of all of our distraction, can become our gods. Our end, our end is not God. Our end are the multiple rental properties. So we're still praying. But God is going to help us meet our goals. God, I'm trying to get these multiple rental properties. Our our end is passive income. Lord, I'm checking in. I'm just checking in. Please bless my family. Help my grandma. Our, Our end is the perfect city with the perfect lifestyle and the perfect weather. I'm not sure why you moved to Chicago, but I declare it's the reason why you're so obsessed with looking at other places to move. Now, we're running 
uh, to everybody else and they mom talking about what's the best decision for me to make? What's the best decision for me and my family for the right place to live? God, I know you have a plan for my life. Direct my steps. All right. Holla at you later. And the obsession, the thing that you build your life upon is the idea of the perfect city with the perfect lifestyle and the perfect weather. And God just begins to become the means to your end. He becomes the means to get your God, which is the perfect city. Our, our end in this space where our goals become our God is the right house with the right zip code, with the right finishes. Our end instead of God is the degree from that school in that field. Our end instead of God is a salary job with benefits. And I'm talking to that person that's, that knows they're saying that ain't, that ain't asking for much, God. All I want is a salary job with benefits. Our end instead of God is fulfilling is a fulfilling and purposeful vocation our end instead of God is the Jerry Maguire you complete me kind of romantic relationship God I've been patient send them my way and we're frustrated God isn't answering our prayer oblivious to the fact that we don't actually want God we just want his help to accomplish our goals in life I know y'all ain't saying amen on the other end of this screen. And so I'll put myself in the picture. For pastors, sometimes success in ministry is our end. And not God. And that just means more people more stuff, more recognition. Sin is, as Rankin Wilborn says, is loving good things. Good things. Those goals are good things. Loving good things the wrong way. It is, it is a disordered heart. It is a disordered uh, list of loves. And so to accomplish those goals, those things that are uh, out there, we, we set up our lives in our 20s and 30s, and then we set up our lives a certain way in our 30s and 40s, and so on and so forth, that our goals have become our gods. And in the middle of all of this, I know that I've told you something, as Pastor D likes to say, I, I know I'm I'm up in someone's kitchen and the difference between being up in your kitchen and where I'm at right now is that I'm in your kitchen. I'm in your Kool-Aid and I got your flavor. And you ought to say to the person next to you, goals are good, but goals make bad gods. You might be sitting there uh, in, in your home and nobody's there with you, and you need to encourage yourself in the Lord and just say out loud, goals are good, but they make for terrible gods. You see, somehow in the midst of all of this distraction, our goals have become the things that we built our lives upon. And God has become a means to our end. So here we are in the middle of a pandemic, filled with anxiety, depression, distracted from anything that truly matters, depressed, tired, burdened, and weary, hearing that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. And here we are thinking to ourselves, but is it? Is it really? So we've looked at the cultural lie. 
We, we've looked at the problem. We are so distracted in the busyness and the hurry of life that we have now uh, transitioned to making good things, goals and different things like that. Good things that, that have now become ruling things in our lives. We've built our lives on things other than God. But see, what's the solution? I'm so glad you asked. The famous reformer Martin Luther once said, all of life is repentance. I've always been a bit confused by that saying until I realized that my heart naturally tries to replace God with other things. And, and here's the crux of the matter. We, we, you and I, we, we, for those of us who are followers of Jesus, we readily know what we've been saved from. I know that uh, I was saved from my sin. I was saved from whatever lifestyle that was. I was saved from the direction that was only ending in destruction and devastation. I was saved. God pulled me out of uh, the, the mess of my, uh, my life and placed me in my right mind, right? We know what we've been saved from. So often we forget what we were saved for. You and I were saved for intimacy with God. Two thousand years ago, Jesus Christ stepped into humanity and lived the perfect life that you and I could not live. He died the death that you and I deserved to die. He never built his life on anything but the father. He was never in a hurry and distracted, too busy to center himself on God's love. He never worshiped any of the goals of his life. He always, always, always did what pleased the father and ultimately he died a sinner's death in our place and for our sins and all of the for all of the times that we did those things and three days later he rose in victory over Satan's sin and death and now it's because of that that he invites you and I to take his yoke upon us and learn from him to slow down to be present in the moment to God, to be present in the moment to others. In Luke chapter 10, Mary and Martha, these two women who, who are followers of Jesus, they have Jesus over to their house and Martha is in the kitchen getting a bunch of things ready, making preparations for taking care and hosting all of these people. And uh, and Mary is seated at the feet of Jesus. And the Bible says that she's listening to what he has to say. And Martha, who's busy making all the preparations, is frustrated with her sister. And he, she comes over to Jesus and she says to Jesus, Jesus, get my sister to come and help me. And Jesus says back to her in Luke 10, 40, verse 41 and 42, Martha, Martha. You're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. In the midst of all the busyness, of, in the midst of good things, the better thing will always be to sit at the feet of Jesus to slow down and listen to what he has to say. In John 15, Jesus calls you and I to abide. And he says it 10 times, abide, abide, abide. In other words, sit at my feet. And listen to what I have to say. I wonder why Jesus says abide ten times. I think it's because he understands the proclivity of the human heart to get so distracted that he had to emphasize it ten times. 
Abide in me and I in you and you will bear much fruit. Don't sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to what he has to say. Apart from me, you can do nothing. There's a lot of people in this life who are on the hamster wheel of life trying to do work. Sometimes in the name of Jesus. Without sitting at his feet. And listening to what he has to say. Without cultivating intimacy with the father and it's when we sit at the father when when we sit at the father's feet when we slow down and we listen to what he has to say it's in that place where we get to experience the main priority of the holy spirit's work in our lives whose job it is to apply the person and work of jesus to our lives and we hear the holy spirit say when we sit at the feet of jesus beloved beloved this is my child in whom i'm well pleased Beloved, by grace. And all of a sudden, in that space, in that place of slowing down, uh, we, we begin to feel life's burdens lighten up. We, we begin to feel anxiety and depression begin to lift from our hearts. Gratitude begins to fill our souls. And then we truly begin to live. Abide in me. And I and you and you will bear much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. It's in that space that God ceases to be a means to an end and he becomes what he rightfully is an end in himself. And so here I am at your neighborhood. And I want to ask you a question. What is that thing that captures your attention throughout the day? What is that thing that when you begin to daydream, you're, you shift to begin to think of that thing over and over and over again, almost in an obsessive way? Remember, as Mary Oliver said, attention is the beginning of devotion. What do you pray for? Matter of fact, if if God were to answer all of the prayers that you prayed last month, would you change? Or would it just be your circumstances that change? If God were to answer all of your prayers from last month, Would you change? Or would it just be that your goals are met? What's the first thing that you wake up in the morning and do? I know I'm talking to somebody right now and uh, you're listening to what I have to say and you're saying, see, that that sounds good for you or good for those of, uh, of, of us who are listening right now who aren't working uh, and burning the midnight oil. But COVID-19 hasn't slowed me down at all. I'm working more now than I was before the pandemic. And I don't have all this time to slow down that you're talking about. And yet I would say to you, you have moments. You have moments to sit at the Father's feet and listen to what he has to say. You have a time in your commute. You have time when you go to grab coffee. You have time when you hop on the train, when you hop in your car. You have moments in the day 
that your spiritual flourishing is going to be dependent upon those moments where you're present to God and present to people. The ideas that I'm sharing with you all this morning, they are not unique to me or Pastor Derek, uh, but a lot of the ideas have been expanded and uh, they, have, they have been... Um, um, they have been kind of oriented to our sermon series. And that book that these ideas are based on is, is called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Uh, this book has been an incredible blessing to my soul as I seek to follow Jesus in community with this brother who has written this book, John Mark Comer, to slow down my life, to be present to God in the moment, be present to people in the moment. I want to commend that resource to you, something that will help uh, foster some of the things that we're going to be talking about throughout this series. Life and life to the full. The good life is found in being present to God in the moment and present to people in the moment. And in order to experience that as a reality of our lives, God has got to be our greatest treasure. God bless you, friend. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your goodness towards us. We thank you, God, that we don't have to look to the future to uh, experience the things that we long for in our souls. But we can practice what it means to sit at your feet and listen to what you have to say today right now, in this moment, in other moments in our days, at the beginning of our days, at the end of our days, in the midst of rushing from one thing to the other, there is a time to sit at your feet and listen to what you have to say. Help us do that, God, for your glory and for our good. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Hey, family, as we continue in worship, now we want to participate in communion with one another or the Lord's Supper. Communion is something that we participate in remembrance of Jesus. So it's set aside for people who are followers of Jesus. And so if you're a follower of Jesus today, I want to invite you to participate with us in communion. One of the things that we're, we, we were talking about throughout the message is that because of Jesus's perfect life, uh, because he didn't build his life on things other than God, because he didn't make his goals his God, but because the Father's love was the end goal of his life, he went to the cross so that you and I could experience the good life, life and life to the full, so that we could be present to God and present to others. And in that way, as we take part in communion, we remind ourselves as we taste and we touch the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus that symbolizes our union to Jesus by faith, that we get to experience together a picture of our union with Jesus and a reminder for us as we celebrate the reality 
that we get to experience all of those things because of his sacrifice on the cross for us. And so with that said, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the bread and eat it together. In the same time, he took the cup, which he said, this is the cup of a new covenant in my blood. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray together. Father, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus. We celebrate the victory of Jesus. And we reflect on the reality that we've been united to Jesus because of his perfect life, his sacrificial death, and his bodily resurrection. Thank you for him. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Hey family, I hope to see you next week. I hope that you continue to join us here in our worship gatherings. November 1st, reminder, we're going to have a live worship gathering. So with that said, go ahead and if you would, just stretch out your hands right where you're at and receive this as your benediction. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with you now and forevermore. Go in peace. You are loved.